credit spreads have surprisingly been muted given the the, the severity of the inversions. Um, can you just comment on that for a sec? Sure. Credit spreads are kind of tagged along with the stock market. I mean, if if stocks are doing well, which they are, I mean, we're we've had a rally, uh, you know, January rally. There's no you say you can have your own opinions, but you can't have your own data. Stocks right. have had a pretty good month. Well, corporate bonds, um, which are how you do credit spreads, um, would tag along with that. The stocks are doing better and companies can, you know, refinance and borrow, et cetera, then there's no reason why corporate bonds shouldn't rally. Um, so I would th think the spreads would come in, uh, but but it's vulnerable to the same reversal, which I'll describe in a minute about stocks. Okay, but so my I guess my question is is would you expect credit spreads to start blowing out when things th that that'll be a key yeah. signal that okay it's starting to get real here? Yes, yeah, okay. in, in in two ways. Uh, number one, the um, you know, whatever your baseline is, probably treasuries, you know, two year notes or five year notes or whatever they will come down a lot not right away it's we may still be a month or two away from, on this but they'll come down a lot and then corporate yields will go up a lot because of the recession because of deterioration increased bankruptcies reduced revenues you know etc um and so those spreads will blow out and it's important to remember um uh <laughs> go back to my uh uh, my uh, entry level credit training at Citibank in the late 1970s, but they actually made us learn stuff. Uh, the uh, interest rates are a lagging indicator. Everyone's like, well, how could interest rates be, um, you know, going up if we're in a recession? The answer is, um, as you get close to recession, who who figures it out first? Well, the Fed figures it out last. They're usually the last to know. Wall Street is second last to know. The people who figure it out first are actual business people, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. restaurant owners, dry cleaners, taxi drivers, um, or even medium-sized businesses. Um, they see it. Uh, uh, you know, if you're in the trucking business, it's it's real time. Uh, you know, if inventories are sky high and new orders are being slashed, you're not you're not moving anything by truck. Uh, so there are certain businesses that are concurrent. So yes, yeah, kind of the, the the yield curves I was talking about are very good forward indicators they tell you what's going to happen next a lot of business people are living in the real world in real time they know what's happening now and the stock market tends to figure it out later but as far as banking and credit is concerned what happens is if you're a business person and you see business uh heading down you know fewer customers whatever you go out and borrow all you can you're like hey there's a really bad recession coming i better if i got lines of credit i'm going to use them up now i don't want my bank changing the terms i don't want material adverse clause Clause average change clauses kicking in and said, I'm going to borrow everything I can. And that creates a demand for funds and interest rates go up. And then the recession hits and the bankers go, huh, what's going on? Credit losses start going up. And then then they just turn off the spigots and they raise standards. They stop doing loss. And then interest rates will start to come down. But the interest rates peak after the recession be, has already begun so it's not so interest rates may not have peaked yet i mean um even you know even the treasury market so that's not unusual um so uh, so stock market's telling us goldilocks bond market's telling us you know here comes uh, you know hurricane mitch or whatever um and then uh there's what i call the reality uh and i guess i'm the storyteller here but um what i see is is a kind of a hybrid. The Fed's doing what they're doing, right or wrong. Okay, they're they're doing what they're doing. The market has their own interpretation. I agree with the market, certainly the bond market, that the Fed has probably over tightened. They probably are at the um, so-called terminal rate. They just don't know it. They're going to keep going for the reasons I explained. That means they're going to make it worse. They're going to make the recession even worse. Um, and they may pivot uh, to say that there could be a rate cut. Um, it won't be in April, but, you know, rate cut in August, maybe. I wouldn't rule that out, but for a really bad reason. In other words, if the Fed cuts rates, which they may, the pivot may be real. It's not because they engineered a soft landing and Goldilocks and everything. Oh, that's just right. It's because they screwed up, as usual, as they've been doing since 1913, they over-tightened. They didn't look at the forward indicators I described. 
and they found out too late and then they got to then they have to slam on the brakes if, or take the foot off the brake if you will in terms of rate hikes and then pivot and we've seen this movie before this is exactly what happened in 2018 i mean i don't <laughs> i don't know uh p attention spans seem to be short these days but it was not long ago go back and look at look at a chart uh, any stock index chart from october 1st 2018 to, to december 24 2018 um less than three months the stock market dropped 20 percent. i mean it's like 19.9 or something on the dow so maybe not technically a bear market but yeah what's the difference it dropped 20 percent, culminating in the christmas eve massacre december 24th 2018 when it dropped i think nasdaq dropped like three percent in one day now here's the point the fed was tightening into that collapse the fed tightened on uh, December 16th, 2018, only like eight days before the Christmas Eve massacre and after most of the 20% collapse had already happened, they tightened one last time. So what it shows you is that when the Fed's on a mission, they they actually don't care about the stock market, this whole, you know, Bernanke put and Greenspan put and all that. That's not how it works. Uh, they don't care that much about the stock market level. Here's what they do care about. They care about disorderly markets. And that's the key word. It's not if stocks are going down, but it's you know, kind of a little, you know, half a percent a day, one percent a day, trending down, lower highs, lower lows, trending down. The Fed doesn't care about that. They're not going to bail out the stock market. They do care if it's disorderly. When was it disorderly? Well, March 2020, at the worst part of the pandemic, it dropped like 30% in like two or three weeks. Um the fall of 2008. I mean, it was like somebody opened a trap door. The Fed does care about that because that kind of disorderly behavior can feed on itself and end up in a 1929 type scenario. So the Fed will get the memo, as I put it, uh, stop raising rates and begin cuts when the markets are disorderly, but not just because they're going down. So right now they're going down, but well, I mean, we had a, a recent rally, but you know, this is the third one. We had a rally in July and early August we had another rally in October, but they both corrected. The, July, the August rally corrected in September. Um, the October rally corrected in November and December. And this January rally is going to correct also, uh, maybe hard. But um, uh, but the Fed, again, that's not enough to get the Fed to act, but a, a so-called disorderly crash will. But that's that may happen. In fact, I expect it will, but, but we're not there yet. So uh, So there may be a pivot you know, in late August, but, or, you know, July thereabouts, but not because of Goldilocks, but because it's not a soft landing, it's a crash landing. And so I agree with the market that we're going to get a pivot, but I completely disagree. In my, in my fairy tale, uh, you know, Little Red Riding Hood gets eaten by the wolf.